Hi guys, Brett here from Hoon's Hobbies and today we're going to start episode 3 of our Tamiya Comical Grasshopper build. So, so far in the build, let's put this box down, we've got our rear chassis component with the wheelie bar and the motor. We've got our front chassis component um, which is about to be married up. But first, next step in the book, step number 12, we're going to be working on the shock absorbers or the damper units. So, let's have a look here what we've got to do. I've got a few specialised tools here that we talk through, but we're working with the W parts tree. Okay, so I've got my nine steps nippers here. Go ahead and cut these off. Now this is everything by fours. Four shock absorbers on this, on this car. They're all the same uh, length and construction. They're a plastic oil filled damper. And by oil filled, I mean exactly that. They're filled with um, uh, a damper fluid. And we can vary the tuning and the handling of the car by the thickness of that oil. Um, now I prefer to use, in competitions, we use um, silicon fluid. And that's because it's consistent and measurable. So I'm actually not gonna use the supplied mineral oil in this kit. I'm gonna swap it out for a middle of the road uh, silicon damper oil. I think I'm gonna use 30 weight I've got on hand. And that way at least I know when it comes time, if I want to, A, if I wanna service it, I've got enough there to rebuild it. Um, and B, if I wanna change the handling characteristics or the tuning of the car, I can either go to a thinner oil or thicker oil and I know my starting point. Okay, so we've got W, and we need W1, sorry, we need V1 as well. The shock ends. And I've got V3, little collet. We've got the spring retainer that can be on the next page. Okay, that should be one unit. Okay, so let's get the same parts off of here. There we go. A little collar. Yeah, so the oil field dampers are really good. It's really good that they've put them in this, even this entry level RC kit. Um, of years gone by, they would have just had uh, friction dampers or pretty much the spring retainers. So the cars will just bounce and run on the springs without that, that action being, being damped or tuned at all. So that's why we have the oil inside the damper unit is to control the movement of the spring. Okay, so we've got some O-rings, I've got the shock body. Now I've got here a bit of O-ring grease using XTR O-ring grease. And I use this on all my all my shock builds. Um, I'm just going to go ahead now, and I usually use a plastic tool. Again, I've got the nine steps gizmo tools here. Now you don't want to use hobby knives or anything too sharp um, and necessarily pointy on your O-rings because you don't want to damage them or mark them at all. So I just put it in the oil and start assembling up the units. So each unit has two o-rings um, no guide or anything in between so it's a pretty simple little unit but sometimes that's the best okay oops it's gonna get that to sit nice and flush now what the, the o-ring grease does it actually protects the, the o-ring from the silicon oil so and if it's a silicon damp uh, if it's a silicon o-ring and silicon oil they can actually cause it to swell which is pretty common got a little rag here I'll just wipe off as I go take a little bit of the excess grease off get that out of there go ahead now to me uh, an interesting point that to me I have helped out with these assembly of these oil filled shocks is it's a one piece piston and shock shaft unit which is really good usually it's a fiddly little uh, shock absorber piston 
and two minute little o-rings and as you're clipping them on for first time builders and stuff can be quite challenging so it's really good that they've they've done that for you on this we want to make sure that we don't come into contact with the shock shaft at all we want to keep that as polished as possible i'm not going to go as fa as far as hand polishing it or anything like that so we'll go ahead here put the shock limiter on and we can start to tie start to do up our, our o-ring sorry our eyelet now the book calls for pliers and a rag on the on the shock shaft which is fine I've however got these aluminium soft jaw pliers here for just such an just such an application like so and there's no measurement for these in the book but I always like to when I'm building my shock absorbers just to ensure that they're the right length um, I'll use some vernier calipers here or maybe not looks like they've gone flat but I can still use them to measure so we've got 10, 18 mil, just measure that in there. I'll lock that off. Gives me a starting point for the other ones. Got a nice smooth movement. We've only got a few mil of travel there, but that's all that this car is going to require. And I can go ahead now, doing up the O-rings, ensuring that they're, it's firm, but without it binding. like so that is beautiful and I've got my shock stand or my, my workstation here go ahead and I'll sit the the first damper unit in there and I'm going to start filling it with oil as per the book now like I said I'm not going to use the manuals prescribed oil I'm going to, I've got this uh, factory team oil here I'm going to use that and fill it up as per the instructions get that in we'll fill that up then I'm going to get it out of the work stand just gonna pump it a few times make sure that there's no air trapped under the piston And then I'll, I'll re-top it up, get all the air bubbles out, and I'll put it back in my shock stand, ready to go. Next one. Okay. Now you can see here that we've got four to do. So speed through this. Put the cap on. Okay. Shaft in. Get the excess grease off. Collar. Eyelet. Soft jaw pliers, do that up. Double check the length. Perfect. Go ahead and put some oil in. Pump it a couple times. You can see all those air bubbles coming out. And then I'll top it up again. Put it in the stand. Next one.
O-rings in. Oops. If you've got a bit of excess grease, it's fine. Just wipe it off. Bit of grease there. Let's get out that way. Got it assembled. Okay. Pile it on. By the time you come to number four, you'll be well practiced. Here we go. Go ahead, fill this one up. I'll just pump it through a little bit, get rid of some of that air, wipe off the excess, and then we'll let it sit to get the rest of the air out. Last unit. Okay. Whoops. Shock body's not off the tree. Here we go. Shock body. Cap. And top mount. There we go. Nip is doing a fantastic job there. O ring number one. In. Grease up O ring. Like so. That should be it for the grease for the moment. We can pop that away. Now I don't only start the, the lower o-ring retainer when I'm putting these together. Then I'll put the shaft in. And that will ensure that there's no binding and excess pressure. Then we can wind it up. Making sure that there's no binding. Everything's placed nice. No need to use tools for that part of it. You can just do it by hand. Get the bottom mount on. There we go, it's firm. Just gonna quickly measure that again. That one can come down a little bit tighter. About half a turn should do it. Perfect. Feels good. Go ahead and fill this one up. And they actually feel really smooth. For an entry level plastic damper, they actually feel really good. And I think that comes down to to me is quality injection molding and engineering there. Put the soft jaw pliers back. The next step that we're gonna to have to do is bleed them. So that's going to be putting in the diaphragm. Like so. And how I generally do this in, in bladder shocks is I usually slide it in from the side making sure that it's pushing out oil. 
This part can be a bit messy, but that's okay. That's what rags are for. And then I'll generally pump it up. This one's got a shock limiter. Holding the, the shock fully compressed. And then I'll start winding up the mount. Holding the, the shock in. Like so. We'll give it a wipe off. Go over it by hand. And you should be able to hear if there's any oil in there. And what we're looking for is a shop that compresses all the way to full compression without bouncing back. And that's exactly what it's doing. So it's going all the way in and it's pulling all the way out and it's not sucking back in either. So that is actually built really nice. And there's no air in there. You hear air in there it sort of squeals if you like. It's sort of a, you can hear the noise of the air inside the oil. Like I said, it's not necessarily a performance race machine this car but we want to build it right perfect and then I'll re repeat that step a further three times so slide the diaphragm in compress the shaft all the way hold it in put on the top cap there we go just doing it by hand holding it compressed Give it a wipe over at the end. Don't need to do it up with any tools or anything like that. It won't rattle loose. And if you do find that there's air in there or you're not happy with the action, you can just simply take the top off and refill it. Let's see how this one looks. It's pretty rare that you'll get all four right first time. Give it a wipe over. Yep, perfect. Come up really good. Come again. Okay, we slide our bladder in. Start by unwinding the top until it sort of clicks. Then you know it's lined up and then screwing it on to ensure that we don't cross thread it. Keeping it compressed. Here we go. Damper unit number three. Cloth's getting a little bit oily, but that's okay. Turn it over. Then we'll check the action. This one here, you can see it's slightly rebounding. It's pushing the, the shaft out about two mil. So I'm going to go ahead and bleed this one again because that will tell me that it's slightly over full. So I'm going to compress it all the way down, loosen off the top cap. I've got it pressed down on the work surface. Loosen the top cap. Undo it until I feel it click. Like so. And then I'll do it back up making sure that all the excess oil gets out and hopefully no air gets in. Okay. Let's see how it's looking this time around. And it is looking perfect. Really happy with that. Very, very good. Okay. Shock number four. Go ahead. Slide the bladder in. We'll compress the unit all the way down. Go ahead, put the cap on. Wind it in while it's compressed. Wipe off all the excess. There we go. So we know all these shocks are the right length. 
because we measured them we know they're all filled with 30 weight oil because that's what we put in and we all know that they're not over full and there's no air in there perfect okay so that is the four damper units built so that was step 13 now onto step 14 so we get to put the springs and the spring retainers on so we've got four springs of the same thickness and strength like so and then we've got our V5 which is our spring retainers I'll need four of those good looking little injection molding these ones great amount of detail and so far in this kit everything has fitted without little to no hand finishing or manipulation it's all gone together really easy okay so we put the spring in then we put the retainer like so And there we have our damper unit. That's one belt and it's asking me to put, there's different preload collars in this one. I'm just going to go ahead and put the middle one in which is a V6, that's what the instruction asks for. And we can use these little collars to adjust the preload of the spring which will in turn adjust the ride height or the, the, the tension on the spring. So I'm going to just build them all the same initially sit that one in another spring another retainer I might cut these out now V6 number two another spring retainer spring preload collar I should say just making sure that they give you three thicknesses and you can use multiple at once but I'm just going to start with the middle thickness preload collar in each one and I can work work my way from there either by the driving characteristics or how it's sitting when it's got the battery and body and everything on here we go last one Spring on, preload collar in, like so. And there we have, and that feels silky smooth. Feels really nice actually. That's really good. Okie dokes. That is step number 15. So now we can actually put them on the car. Now there's no front or rear in the damper assembly. They're all the same length, they've all got the same preload, so we can click them on anywhere. And these ones, it's asking for a, a ball stud. I just find this ball stud. Should have opened the screw bag before I started assembly. That is effectively the front shock tower. Got my little Tamiya box wrench here go ahead and assemble that one up get that ball all the way in I'm really looking forward to getting this comical out and about looks like a really fun car from Tamiya and great fun and that's what RC needs sometimes here we go okay I can pop this on start at the bottom shouldn't need to use any tools like that pop again fitting 
stops absolutely beautifully. Front ones are on. Have a look at that. Starting to look like a buggy somewhat. I like this, the rear end with the wheelie bar. That is such a nice touch. I'm hoping that driving dynamically, it's, we're actually going to use it. Hopefully it does wheelies everywhere. Should bring smiles aplenty. Okay, so that is the rear ones on. The front ones on. Now, I hope we get to bring the two together, which we do. All right, I can put the car stand out the way for a second and get back to the instructions. Okay, step number 16, marrying the chassis. So make sure these wires are out the way. This one goes like this, sits like that. It's just a matter of eight screws. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, have a look got my nine steps this screwdriver we'll get a couple of these screws in the important part when doing things like this is not to tighten them down unevenly is to get it all sitting nice before we actually tighten them down so I'm going to do them up sort of across the, the chassis formation make sure they're all lined up and sitting nice should make them easier to do up and ensure that everything's straight and aligned get this one done up and now that it's together it looks even cooler we can actually start to see the wheelbase it actually looks like a radio control car here we go Again, I'm not doing these up to the point that they're tight. Just getting them all sitting nice, straight, mating all the surfaces, making sure that everything's aligned. Here we go. Some people like to use electric screwdrivers for jobs like this, but I really don't think it's necessary. They're not that difficult. Uh, and there's something about rewarding about doing something by hand you know how tight it is you know that it's done right just opening up another packet of screws here my little parts tray it's really important to have as least packets open at any given time as possible less stuff to get lost to misplace and to pack up in between steps okay so that is one two three four one two three four yep that is all eight of them in and they're sitting nice so i can go ahead and tighten them up again you can see it didn't need any force to line anything up next step Step 17, we've got the chassis together, now it's time to start mounting the body posts. So we have to go finding some parts. L, parts tree L, F, L, here we go. So, L10. I need this one here. 
Now this is actually the light bucket and assemblies because you can actually upgrade this kit and and have LEDs on it. So the lights not only look cool but they also can be fully functional if you buy the buy the either the extra LED kit or just wire something up yourself. Okay got that one we need L5 rear body post here I've got this one Nipper's doing an exceptional job and then we've got L4 which is this one right here got two of L4s now this is a nice rubbery or, or flexible parts tree this one um, obviously they don't want it to be stiff and brittle these parts so they've made them quite bendy and supple so I've got the rear of the car here you can start by okay so it sits like that and then we've got the, the light bucket here, like so. Just getting my head around how it actually is going to sit together. Sometimes it pays to do a bit of pre-assembly before you actually screw it all to the car. And then we've got this one here. Okay, how does this one fit in? So it fits in like so. And there's a little screw, a little two by five mil screw again using the using the part scale as a reference to use my little screwdriver for this one this is for the light unit I've never seen one of these with lights I reckon look really cool we might have to look into that once it's finished It's only a two mil screw, no need to do that up too tight. Then we've got some 15 mil screws here, quite long by Tamiya standards. I need four of those. Alright, so I can assemble this top one first. Getting it all seated. As the car comes together, it actually comes a lot, a fair bit harder to to manage and handle. Bit of a balancing act sometimes. So it's important that you've got yourself a good work area, a pit mat, so forth. All right, so we can put this one on. Oops. And it faces at the back. And it needs a washer. Here we go, parts tray. Like so. This one started. I 
get it located in its slot and we can apply a bit of pressure like so it's cool how it mounts everything nice and straight for you go ahead and put this one on small screw small screwdriver can be quite fiddly these really small screws if I can just get it started must have shock oil on my hands, it's quite slippery. There we go. Got it in, get it started. Like so. Get the body post on. Get the top screw in. Here we go. Put the lower one in with the washer. Like so. Okay. Put this light mount in, lower hole. Get it all married up and start to tighten it up. Again, making sure that it goes into its slot as we take up the slack. There we go. And there is the rear body post on. Rear light mounts body posts cool that is step 17 step 18 front body posts okay so we're going to cut some more parts off of the parts tree L6 got one here another one here There we go. Got some 15 mil screws down there. We've got some 10 mil for these body posts. Where are they? These ones. That one. And that one. Two 10 mils. Okay, front body posts go on. Doesn't seem to matter which way. They've got a locator, a little square locator there to ensure that they're nice and straight. And that'll make sure they don't twist or rattle loose as well. The fact that their body posts are indexed onto the car. Again, good to see Tamiya taking the time to engineer it in. Yeah, this one here. There we go. Okay, that's a front body post. Step number 18. I might get some more screws ready first. So we've got these ones. We've got two by 10 mils. We've got these ones, we've got small washers, that'll be these ones, two of them, and then we've got two of the larger washers, 
Okay, now screws. Three by twelve. Just finding the right screws. Gonna have to open another screw bag. Here we go. That looks like a 12 mil screw. Nope, 10. Just bear with us. There we go, 12 mil. 12 mil. Couple of 10s. Four tens. Four tens. And then I need two eights. These ones right here. Okay, so I've got them in my work area set up. Now let's get some parts happening. L12. Looks like a comical nerf bar if ever I've seen one. And L3. And M. L2. There we go, and I need a M6. M6. Okay, let's cut some of these flashings off. Pretty good. Okay, so the L3 is facing up this way, like so. Handy little locator in the nerf bar. If I just cut my flashing off a bit better. There we go. Three by ten. So, got the M6, let's go get the locators right, like there, now we can see we're getting like an exoteles exoskeleton protection for our comical and the L2 bolts onto it. So we can offer this one up to the, the chassis now. We could go ahead and screw that on. So you can see here that's why the parts were nice and rubbery because that's our crash protection. And this one here L2 mounts out here. Okay. So that's a three by eight with a washer. Put that one now, and then we can start on the others. And this is quite tricky. This one, sort of 
one of those parts where you almost need three hands. If I just got the right screw there. Hang on a second. I can put that on after. All right, let's get this one screwed up. Mm -hmm. The front mounts are the 12 mil ones. There we go. Get that one screwed in. Again, not doing each one up tight until they're all in and married up. Rear one. Uh, three by twelve. Get some more twelve mil screws. One, two, three. Okay, get this one on. Then I can put this adjuster on. Like so. Just looking for my three by eight. It's always easy to work with the car towards you, but now it's all together, it's much harder to handle. Loosen this one a bit so we can adjust it. There we go. And the front screw in that one is a big long 15. Gonna come right into the chassis. This crash protection here is really what's gonna save the car's chassis and save it from being broken because it is so flexible and rubbery in this section. There we can see. Okay, I can go along now and tighten all these up. There we go. Look at that, it's even protecting the motor there on the side. Fantastic. So I've got another section of the, the exoskeleton uh, out of roll cage if you will. So I had a nerf bar. We had this one. We had and then our last piece
Okay. So, we'll start with the front part. Making sure there's no flashing. Just looking for the screw here. It's a 10 mil one. That's the one. 10 mil screw here. Then we can offer it up to the chassis. I can get this adjust one on now actually. Big long one in first, so 15 mil. This one on. Get this one here done up. Rear one to twelve mil. Second time around, coming together a little bit easier when you can see exactly how it's going to look on the car. A couple of twelve mils in the front. Here we go. Got this one here. That is the body protection system on. It's got its little roll cage on. It's gonna stop it all from getting broken protect the motor, act like a little handle as well. Really cool. Just make sure that one's tight. There we go. All fits beautifully. Okay, so that brings us to step 20, which leads into the fitting of the speed controller and the receiver. So I think we'll leave that here for this week. Yeah, that's episode three. Um, so we've built the, the damper units, we've built the shock absorbers, showed you how to do that. We've married the chassis and put the chassis protection stuff on. So that is really cool. So yeah, the little, to me, a comical grasshopper is really starting to take shape. So join me, join me next week as we do episode four on the Tamir's comical grasshopper build. I'm Brett from Hearns and thanks for watching. <laughs>